Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely, so we can feel good about having music in our lives, so we can understand what's going on with music and the fretboard and not just playing notes and not knowing what it all means. So that's what I talk about here on the channel. And this video is my top 10 beginner guitar tips. I taught private guitar lessons for 20 years. I don't do that anymore because now I do these video lessons and this is what I love to do now, but I taught one-on-one -on -one lessons for two decades. And I want to give you my take on what I think are the top 10 practical tips for beginners. And really these are very practical tips for any guitar player. Any guitar player might find at least one thing from this list that is really helpful. But if you're a beginner, you definitely need to hear this stuff. And some of this is a little unconventional. A few of the tips here, either you won't find it anywhere else, this is my particular take on things, or a couple of the tips even are the opposite of what other people advise. And of course, I'll explain why as I talk through the list. If you're a beginner and you take some of these things to heart, you will not sound like a beginner for long. This should really be helpful. Let's dive into the list. These tips aren't organized into least important to most important or anything like that. There's just such a combination of pieces of advice. Let's do a few of the very practical, just common tips to get them out of the way first, and then we'll get into some kind of heavier, deeper stuff. The first one I wanna mention is make sure your fretting hand nails are trimmed all the way. Do not have nail sticking out at all on your fretting hand. This will hinder your ability to fret notes in a major way. And I've seen, seen this over and over again, people showing up for their lessons and having even just a little bit of nail that in normal life doesn't seem like a big deal, but then you cannot play on the tip of your finger, which forces our, you know, us to have bad technique and just makes everything a million times more difficult. One sneaky way to get around this is just make sure you're practicing regularly. And every time you practice, it'll remind you to clip your nails. So if you're not clipping your nails and you go to play, then you it might be an indicator like, oh, I haven't, I haven't been playing for a few days. Make sure those nails are clipped so you can play on the tip of your finger when needed so you can have much better technique. Let's go to tip number two. Beginner guitar tip number two is to play as close to the fret as possible whenever possible. It won't be the thing to do 100% of the time and I'll explain why, but it's a great thing to shoot for because it makes playing so much easier. What I mean by this is that we have this whole fret space that we think of as the fret. Well, there's the fret on the right side of it from my playing perspective right now is the fret that's actually cutting off the distance of the string. The closer you are to that, the less pressure that you have to use and the cleaner and the better that it's going to be. If you play, let's do this experiment, string four, fret five, play as close to the fret as possible and push down really lightly. Get a clean note though. Now don't change your pressure and move over and that is gone. So if you're over on the other side of the fret, you have to push down way harder and it's gonna get that kind of gnarly buzz sound. If you're playing chords, you can't always do that. So don't stress about this being perfect. In a lot of situations, you can't actually play closest to the fret. That's okay, just do it when it feels possible. So if I'm playing an A chord that's often like this with these fingers, well, this finger here, there's no way I can get it over there. So you have to kind of stack and and kind of cascade these fingers. This one's right next to the fret and this one's not. So you have to push down a little harder when needed. Similarly, if you're playing scales, uh, you can, of course, shift your position to try to be as close to the fret as possible and play very lightly. But depending on how fast you're playing the scales, you might have not have time to shift. And depending on your hand reach and all that stuff, you maybe can't always play it close to the fret. Okay, so when possible in your practice zone, when you go to play real music or run through a song or try to enjoy it or play with friends, don't think about that at all. Just do it in your real practicing and be aware of that advantage and it'll help you out a lot. Let's go to tip number three. Beginner guitar tip number three is so similar. And sometimes I do this where I take what sounds like the same piece of advice and break it up into two things just to emphasize it so strongly. Tip number three is play with as little pressure as possible. And playing close to the fret is what's going to allow that. But this is its own tip because regardless of if you're anywhere on the fret, almost all of us all the time are playing with way too much pressure squeezing 
10 times what we actually need, okay? So play with as little pressure as possible 100% of the time, okay? In a real musical situation, you'll tense up more, and you don't want to think about any of this in real music playing, but in your practicing, really, really strive for this. I'm going to link you to a video that's in the description about something I call the pressure test. Very effective, Another a video dedicated to this idea of playing with less pressure. So if this is a challenge for you, this squeeze and, and playing with way too much pressure, please watch that video when you get a chance. Let's go on to tip number four. <laughs> tip number four is one of these unconventional ones. Do not practice with a metronome by default. Don't just practice with a metronome because it seems like a good idea because someone said you should do that. Do practice with a metronome when you are working on playing in time, when the thing that you are working on is focusing on playing in time. So this is kind of a split advice. One, don't practice with a metronome unless you know why. And two, do practice with a metronome when you need to work on your time. And we do want to work on our time because playing in time really solidly is one of the main factors that makes a beginner sound more advanced, right? To, to a beginner sounds like the time is loose or dragging or not locked in. And to lock in our time is one of the biggest factors of just how something sounds to make it sound more advanced, more experienced. So you do wanna play in time, but only practice with the metronome to work on time when you are focusing on time and that is your main focus, okay? And I've talked a lot on my channel about focus on one thing at a time. I'll link to a video about practicing, focusing on one thing at a time, but don't play with a metronome just because if you're practicing something else, oh, I'm learning my scales. If, if the scale is hard and you don't have it completely down, like you can do it in your sleep, don't add the metronome in. Add the metronome in after you can play something so you can focus on the time. We can't focus on more than one thing at once. So this is what gets us discouraged when we try to do more than one thing at once, when we don't even have something down yet, we add something else in. Okay. So that's kind of a lot of general advice along with this, but you get the main point. Don't practice with the metronome unless you know why, which is that you have everything down and you're working on your time. Beginner guitar tip number five. This is a tip for all of us, actually. This is one of the most important concepts as a teacher that I could ever communicate. And that's that there is not a single thing that you need to know as a guitarist, as a musician, as a student, as an artist, there's nothing that you need to practice. There's nothing that anyone can say, you better be able to play this thing. You better be able to do this. Okay. We can certainly be inspired by many, many directions and practice all kinds of things, but do it because you understand what your goal is in the moment. Do it because you understand the music that inspires you. Okay. There's so many musicians that are known for being able to, for example, BB King known for playing his lead licks, not playing chords and not being able to play lead licks while he's singing. Right? So, so many limitations, but he just leaned into that or that just for is, you know, what inspired him or what he did as this kind of iconic blues sound that now we think of with BB King. So BB King didn't say, Oh, I need to be able to coordinate my chords with my singing at the same time. Uh, just because that's a thing that guitarists should be able to do. No, there's nothing. If you never play a chord in your life and you only play single notes and you're loving it and you're playing music and you're whatever, you can do whatever you want. You can never play single notes, never work on scales, never learn theory. If those things feel compelling to you, work on them. I work on a ton of stuff because I know I want to, and I completely ignore other stuff that I don't care about. <laughs> and I love to explore stuff for the sake of learning it. That's fine. I like to see, oh, what's, what's up with this? What, what's this technique? I'm just going to play with it just to practice, just for practice, because I like practicing. But the takeaway here is there's nothing that you have to learn, even to be an amazing musician, to be a professional, to be whatever you want. There's not a single thing. Okay. So you can get really good at one thing and have that be your pride and joy in terms of being a musician. You can know all the theory because that's interesting to you. Even stuff you don't play, you can play a bunch of stuff and not know any other theory, whatever you find over the long term, your journey, what is important to you. And you'll have a much more fulfilling practice experience. You'll have 
way, way more progress and rewards happen from your playing. You'll be way more proud of it. You'll have something to show for it. If you don't just play things that you think you should know or that someone said you should know and you don't feel compelled to and you don't know why. Whew, that was, that was a big one. That's an important one to me. Beginner guitar tip number six. This is similar, but it's its own thing. And this is very critical, especially for beginners. Musical learning is not linear. There are not levels of guitarists. This is why teaching is actually quite difficult because there isn't just a curriculum method book that is the universal ladder that we climb as guitarists. The learning of music is not a linear process. There's not, here's what you learn first, here's what you learn second, here's what you learn third. A beginner is here, an intermediate player is here, an advanced player is here. See how this is related to the last tip? This is absolutely critical to understand because someone might be extremely advanced at sight reading, but they can't improvise at all. And they probably, because they don't want to improvise at all, like the last tip and vice versa. Someone could be amazing at improvising, not read music at all and everything and anything in between. Great ears, not great ears, amazing technique, but can't compose, blah, blah, blah. It's not linear. There's not different stages and levels, right? I do put things into levels of difficulty as much as I can for the sake of teaching and curriculum and design, pedagogy. That's an important thing to be able to do. But on a whole, there's not this thing where, oh, when will I get to the next level of guitar playing? Or what level am I at now? Or, you know, what's next to learn? Okay. Take this on as our biggest journey, our biggest aspect of our endeavor, that we are designing our own path as we go. See how this is very related to the last tip. So musical learning is not linear. There's not a uh, defined step-by-step -step progress that we go through. As musicians, we have to find it for ourselves along the way. Beginner guitar tip number seven. This is one of those slightly unconventional ones and other people will maybe advise uh, the opposite of this sometimes. But this one is that it's completely okay to look at your hands. Why should we feel like we're supposed to not look at our hands? We're playing music. Look at your hands, that's fine. If there's a spot where it's advantageous for some reason in a practical sense to not look at your hands, then you work on that for that reason. Or if you just feel compelled that you don't like the way you look on stage if you're performing, look at your hands, great, that's a reason. But don't feel like we should be able to play whatever we play without looking at our hands. Ex fully advanced professional players, there are moments at least where they just have to look at their hands or they've never worked on, you know, big position shifts doing it with a, without looking at your hands. Why would we make that harder on ourselves if we don't have to? As you play more, eventually, if you're in one position, you won't have to look at your hands because you'll feel where you are in one position. That's natural. That'll just happen. But as far as sh position shifts or more advanced uh, arrangements of classical pieces, like... Yeah, look at your hands. So many great players. I had a classical guitar professor, amazing world-class classical guitarist, and here's how he played the whole time. He played just staring at the fretboard, and he sounded amazing, and people came, you know, he toured the world playing performances. We're playing music. We're not doing, you know, we're not, there, there's no um, visual aspect to that unless we want there to be. And you're perfectly welcome to desire that, practice it. It's great, it's fun to practice, but it's not required. I would never tell someone, don't look at your hands. Look at your hands if you want to, unless you feel like it's limiting you in some way. Beginner guitar tip number eight. This is a big, deep philosophical one. This is that I highly advise that you switch what your goal is, that you change your identity as soon as possible and change it from having a goal of being good at guitar, which is impossible to define, so we'll probably always be disappointed. Switch it to being someone that plays guitar. This forces you to make sure you're actually doing it, so you're doing it consistently, which is gonna be a, another tip coming up. But if you do this, we, we want to identify as someone who plays guitar or practices guitar, or even is learning guitar, that's fine, but don't have your goal be to be good. Don't have your goal be to, you know, something vague like that. You can have a goal of, I want to play a recital or I want to jam with my friends. Those are very tangible. Those are real. But don't feel like, when am I going to be good? You know, I want you to feel like every day that you play the guitar, even if it's day one, 
even if you're playing your third week of ever touching the guitar, that you feel like you're there. You have arrived. You are someone that plays guitar. And if you learn to love the process of that, the progress, the results, sounding amazing, that's all going to come automatically because you just want it to show up. Imagine someone who loves to run. They love to jog and they just love it. They love to jog. So they go jog and they might get to somewhere amazing, some amazing view, but they weren't thinking the whole time. I got to get to that view. I got to get to that view and being miserable. When they get there, they're like, oh, nice. Now I'm excited to, you know, jog back as well. And of course, they're also very physically fit because they're just enjoying the act itself. So please enjoy the act itself. Do whatever you can do. If you need a journal, 20 pages to figure it out, switch your identity to being someone that is one foot in front of the other along the way that you enjoy practicing or you enjoy being someone that has this in your life and the skills and the, how good it sounds will all come as, an, as a byproduct of that. Side note, bonus tip is that anything you're practicing is not going to actually be a part of your playing or sound good for a long time, like six months. You practice something new, it's really hard. Imagine, when is this going to sound good? It's not going to be that day. It's not going to be the next day. It's not going to be the next week. It's not going to be the next month. It's going to be like six months later that you feel like, oh, that thing I was practicing all this time is finally a part of my playing. So we have to be in it for the long game and think in terms of our identity being someone that is doing a process and not wanting to be good or get to some end result, which is never going to happen. Beginner guitar tip number nine very related. Like I said, I like to break these up into kind of multiple related topics. This one is very simple. It's just that you want to focus on consistency over quality. I have a video where I talk about this for myself. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's one of my anniversary videos on the channel or something like that. But focus on your consistency of playing as a priority over the quality of your practice, over how good you sound, over everything else. When you are practicing consistently and you feel like that's just a given that you do that, then you can worry about how is the quality of my practice? How much am I being challenged? Am I working on stuff that's actually improving? Don't worry about that until you're showing up and it's just rock solid that you do it consistently because as soon as it's hard, which is what it needs to be to make real progress, we'll get discouraged and want to stop practicing. So focus on consistency first for like a year. Play consistently for a year and then say, all right, I know I'm going to show up and practice. Now let's make it really hard so I can make more rapid progress. Beginner guitar tip number 10 is very practical and musical. I want you to start thinking about incorporating dynamics in your playing as soon as possible. I said playing in time is one of the main things that we can hear instantly if someone sounds like they're a beginner or a more advanced player. Well, dynamics is another one. If someone is playing without dynamics, it sounds really amateur. So dynamics, play softer, play louder, dig in more you know, play. I talked about this in my last video, which you should check out, which is uh, 10 beginner friendly songs, my top 10 uh, beginner guitar song list. And I talk about strumming in a way where sometimes, sometimes we're accenting and hitting it harder than others. And that's way more musical sounding than just playing at the same dynamic level and all the strings all the time. So whatever it means to you, start thinking about dynamics, playing softer, playing louder, incorporating that emotional expression into your playing. Even if that's hard, just have that be something you want to try to incorporate in your practice, in your playing as soon as possible. I want to give you a bonus tip here. So this is number 11. I've seen so many people want to learn guitar, especially adults learning, where the idea of playing guitar, they wanted to play all their life and now they're doing it. But because we're very established in our routines in our lives as adults, um, we maybe aren't listening to that much music or we may be listening to only music that we used to like and nothing else. And it's just not integrated into our lives that much. If that's not you, ignore this. If you listen to a ton of music, great. But if you're a beginner and really at any stage, take listening to music very, very seriously. If you're, say you're starting out and you're a beginner and you listen to some music, but not a lot, have it be your homework to listen to more music, listen to more variety, find new artists, find people who are new today, find old music that you never heard of. Find people that are playing and just inspiring you. It doesn't have to be guitar. It can be anything. Just take, this will help you advance faster than almost anything else, assuming you're playing consistently in a few of these other tips. Listening to music is this kind of background processing that your brain can be doing at all times. It is so beneficial for you, for your brain, for your coordination, for just your whole system as you're learning the guitar. So don't be 
a musician who is practicing or learning, beginner, whatever stage, if you're not absorbing as much music as possible and treat it as your homework, I have to do it on purpose sometimes or I don't feel like listening to music, but I put it on. And as soon as I put it on, then I'm very glad I did every single time. The reason I don't feel like it, that's a whole other conversation, kind of makes me feel like it's related to work for me, but I do do it very purposefully. Uh, otherwise, I kind of sometimes try to avoid it because I don't want to think about work. I don't want to think about teaching. I don't want to think about, you know, when I'm in my off time, but I put it on and it always was the right choice for me. So if that applies to you, great. If it doesn't, and you're like, what are you talking about? I always listen to music. Fine. Ignore that one. If you don't have my chord chart called Chords with Color. It is the coolest chord chart on the internet. It's amazing for beginners. It has all the chords of the easiest for way to play them through five different keys and then a bunch of alternative options for those chords that give it color, make it unique. It's one of the coolest practice resources uh, that I have available. It's a chord chart called Chords with Color. It's totally free. There's a link to it in the top of the description that you can get, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color to get it there. And it, I also have a list of the top 20 most common chord progressions. So you can use the chord chart, use the chord progressions, get a ton of practicing out of that amazing resource. I hope you'll grab it if you're interested and if you don't have that yet. If you're a beginner and you want more resources, check out my playlists. I have a playlist that's called beginner friendly and it's every video I've ever put out that I think is beginner friendly or helpful for beginners. And whether you're a beginner or not, check out my playlists. You can go to my main uh, channel page and then click on playlists and I have them organized really nicely into topics and series so you can find the topic you want to learn about or a specific series uh, that goes through a process of some kind. So if you're looking for more information, definitely browse through that. I'll put a link to the beginner friendly series on the screen here. If you're watching on YouTube, I post a new lesson video every single Tuesday. Next week's lesson is uh, more advanced. It's a chord melody lesson, which is something I've been talking about a lot. And we're going to do Don't Think Twice by Bob Dylan, where we're able to play the melody and the chords at the same time. It's going to be a fun lesson. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.